Party on, dudes! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 moments from the Bill and Ted movies. Excellent! Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, excellent. we're taking a look at the funniest, most creative, and most excellent moments from the first two Bill and Ted films. If you haven't seen these cult classics, consider yourself warned <laughs> that there will be spoilers. Excellent! Number 10, Mr. The Kid, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Who's he? He's Billy the Kid. In order to pass history class, Bill and Ted travel through time to pick up several historical figures. One of their most humorous misadventures takes them to the Old West, and no, they don't run into Marty or Doc Brown. They do encounter Billy the Kid, however, who seems like an ideal candidate for their history presentation. I need two men. Who's with me? We're with you, Billy the Kid! Unfortunately, Bill and Ted's poor poker faces result in an old-fashioned saloon brawl, and the cheated players will not accept water park passes as compensation. Getting thrown across the room, the two airheads are briefly distracted by some painted ladies, but they still manage to outwit the outlaws with the oldest trick in the book. Look! It's a good year blimp! Huh? <laughs> Number 9. Evil Doubles – Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey How's it going, Bill and Ted? Bill and Ted's bogus journey is a considerably darker outing than its predecessor, or at least as dark as a Bill and Ted movie could be. The sequel takes an especially grim turn when the dim-witted duo meets their evil robot doubles, who've been sent back in time to kill them. I got a weird feeling here. <sighs> Why? I don't know. How do we know these guys are really us? The conniving counterparts claim they dropped by to help, but the real Ted senses that something is amiss. Of course, his devious doppelganger gains his trust by answering the most hysterically stupid question imaginable. If you're really me, how many fingers am I about to hold up? Three. Whoa! Ted should have trusted his instincts, however, as the robots lure them to a desert where our heroes are thrown off a cliff to their deaths. That is so not excellent. <laughs> Number eight, Bill and Ted go to hell. Bill and Ted's bogus journey. We got totally lied to by our album covers, man. Did we mention that the working title for the sequel was Bill and Ted Go to Hell? That is exactly where Bill and Ted wind up following a long, long fall. Upon arriving, Satan tortures the guys by making them live out their worst nightmares, which includes Colonel Oates, Bill's repulsive granny, and one messed up Easter Bunny. While still maintaining the franchise's zany tone, some of this imagery is demented enough to be in an actual horror picture, calling to mind the works of Tim Burton. Fortunately, Bill and Ted eventually make it to heaven where they meet God. Even when speaking to the universe's creator, Bill can't resist making a Uranus joke. Not to mention your other great planets. Mars, Jupiter, Uranus. <laughs> Number 7. Philosophizing – Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure Socrates. Hey, we know that name. Socrates was one of history's greatest minds, but Bill and Ted aren't exactly Plato or Aristotle. Hell, they even look up Socrates' name under the Socrates section. You wouldn't think these two doofuses would be able to relate to one of the fathers of Western philosophy, but they surprisingly hit it off. Upon arriving in ancient Athens, Bill and Ted luckily catch Socrates as he compares life to dust falling through the fingers of time. All we are is dust in the wind, dude. The guys apply this philosophy to their current situation, impressing the Greek icon. Much like the movie itself, Bill and Ted may seem stupid on the surface, but if they can win over Socrates, perhaps they're much smarter than they look. Number 6. Death Gets Melvined – Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey Ted, it's the Grim Reaper, dude! Ingmar Bergman's interpretation of death is one of the most daunting figures in cinematic history. The Grim Reaper from the Bill and Ted universe appears similarly intimidating at first glance, but he quickly turns into a comedic foil for our leads. Excuse us, dude, but your shoes are untied. After biting the dust, Bill and Ted cheat death by using the second oldest trick in the book. Apparently not even the afterlife's guide can overcome the power of a Melvin. <laughs> In time, Bill and Ted are forced to challenge Death to an actual game. Instead of chess, they best him at Battleship, 
Clue, Table Football, and Twister before Death finally admits defeat. Sorry, Death, but losing is a part of life. And the afterlife, too. Ah! Yeah! 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 Number 5. It's Computers. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Things are more moderner than before. Bigger and yet smaller. One of the funniest moments from the original film doesn't come from Bill or Ted, but a minor supporting player named Ox Robbins. Although our titular duo aren't the brightest bulbs, this football player can barely construct a coherent sentence while giving his history presentation, making up the word moderner. It's computers. By the time he tries discussing the advances made possible through computers, his meandering speech has all but imploded in on itself. Ox rebounds with six immortal words, however, resulting in uproarious applause. Actor William Robbins has no other screen credits to his name, but in roughly 30 seconds, he delivered a line that people are still quoting to this day, even inspiring a 1999 rock song. San Diego's High School Football Rules! <laughs> Number 4. The Iron Maiden Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. How's it going, ladies? Even with the fate of humanity on the line, Bill and Ted still find the time to ask some bodacious babes to the prom. Arriving in medieval times, the two encounter a couple of princesses who are being forced into marriage. Their plan to escape is cut short when the evil Duke arrives, ordering that Bill and Ted be sent into the Iron Maiden, a medieval torture instrument. Put them in the Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden? In a hilarious bit of confusion, the duo assumes this somehow involves heavy metal band Iron Maiden, but it soon dawns on them that they're about to be executed. The good news is that they escape and are later reunited with the princesses, evolving wild stallions from a duo to a quartet. One, two, one, two, three, four! Number three, Napoleon goes to San Dimas, Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Come on, Napoleon. Everybody's waiting for us. It's a no! No, 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 no! If Napoleon Bonaparte arrived in modern times, what would he do? Would he try to conquer Europe and then the rest of the world? Nah, he'd probably just want to conquer a giant ice cream sundae. Seeing one of history's most iconic military leaders acting like a kid in a candy store is nothing short of priceless, making Napoleon a standout of the first Bill & Ted movie. Although he can power down ice cream like no other, Napoleon isn't the most formidable force at a bowling alley. Nevertheless, he dominates Waterloo Water Park, riding an epic water slide several times, and in true Napoleon fashion, refusing to wait his turn in line. Number 2. Mall Madness – Bill & Ted's Excellent Adventure You all seem to be suffering from a mild form of hysteria. <laughs> oh, Napoleon isn't the only one who takes advantage of the modern innovation San Dimas has to offer. The other historic figures Bill & Ted bag are set loose at the mall, where they get into all sorts of amusing shenanigans. Genghis Khan proves to be quite the athlete, even if he doesn't use sports gear for its intended purposes. Good thing the Mongol Empire didn't have baseball bats or skateboards. Meanwhile, Honest Abe fights with a photo guy, Joan of Arc teaches aerobics, and Ludwig von Beethoven sets the mood with a kick-ass keyboard solo. These hijinks land everyone in the slammer, and not even Sigmund Freud can talk himself out of trouble. I want to know why you claim to be Sigmund Freud. How do you claim I'm not Sigmund Freud? Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Wild Stallions! Listen to this dude, Rufus. He knows what he's talking about. Right. Oh, and Ted, give my love to the princesses. Who? Excellent! Excellent. Excellent! And all we can say is... Let's rock! One, two, one, two, three! You totally did it, dude. I totally possessed my dad. Number one, Bill and Ted meet Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Dudes, you guys are gonna go back in time. Yeah! This scene not only sets Bill and Ted off on their most excellent adventure, but also perfectly encapsulates the wacky yet inventive tone of the entire franchise. It's clear that strange things are afoot at the Circle K when the guys are greeted by a man named Rufus, who arrives in a time-traveling telephone booth that looks an awful lot like Doctor Who's TARDIS. Greetings, my excellent friend. Do you know when the Mongols ruled China? Matters only get stranger when Bill and Ted encounter their future selves. Bill and Ted can't believe their eyes at first, but they are officially convinced after asking one question. 
if we had to rate this scene on a scale of 1 to 10, we'd give it a 69. What number are we thinking of? 69, dudes! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.